Hey, what's up you wonderful people, it's Handy Jeff here, and today we are changing the oil on this 60 horsepower Mercury outboard, and it's a four-stroke EFI model, but if you've got a different thing, it's going to be pretty similar. All outboard motors are pretty much this simple, but let's go over the things that you're going to need. The tools that you are going to need today, you are going to need an 18 millimeter socket, you are going to need a funnel of some sort, and I'm using a Quicksilver oil change kit. These are for 40, 50, and 60 horsepower EFI and carbureted models. It's got the oil filter, a drip tray, and all the oil that you're going to need. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description. It's an Amazon affiliates link, and if you actually click that, you help the channel out at no additional cost to you. So hey, be super cool and order from that Amazon affiliates link if you don't have your oil already, because it really helps me out and it helps me provide content like this. But you're also going to need something to catch your oil in, like that beautiful little drip tray right there. So get yourself one of those if you don't have it. So the first step in pretty much any maintenance item on an outboard motor, you just want to remove your cowl. So come over here on this particular one. It's literally a hinge. I just had this off not long ago, so I'm not going to have to lean it all the way forward. Pull it off and go find a place for it to sit where it won't get damaged, like that nice piece of foam right there. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and trim this up to about a trailering position, just so that it's got a little bit of a tilt on it. And that, for context, is right where I'm going to have it compared to the boat. Then if you haven't already, you're going to want to tilt your motor to the side where your drain plug is. Spoiler alert, this is your oil drain plug. As you can see, I have turned the steering wheel so that the oil drain plug is facing somewhat down. Hey, isn't that wonderful? The next step is you are going to locate your drain plug, which mine's right here. You're gonna put your oil catch can or whatever you're going to be using below you. And you're just gonna go ahead and loosen this oil pl drain plug. Now, oftentimes they would say you need to bring your motor up to operating temperature first. I bought this boat at auction and I don't even know if there's oil in it. So we're gonna hope that there is. Once you've got that loosened, you can go ahead and unscrew your oil drain plug. You wanna do it slowly and make sure you hold on to it so you don't have to chase it around your garage or wherever you end up doing this at. And then you try to get the oil into the can. So let's play a game. All right, everybody, take your guess. Are we gonna make it? I don't know if we will. Oh, hell no, not even close. I didn't know it would have that much force. That's okay though. Nothing a little kitty litter won't fix. So then we're going to allow our oil to go ahead and drain out. Which this process could take a few minutes. And that's okay. The good news is that my motor had oil in it because I wasn't convinced that it was going to have. So that's great news for me anyway. We're going to let this go ahead and drain for a while, and we're going to come back in a few minutes. All right, guys, most of the oil is done draining. And you know what? I come from a family where we used to use milk jugs to hold our oil. So if you need this, this is a lifesaver. It makes life so much easier. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well, this little oil catch can from Amazon. So one of the best parts about this oil change kit is it actually comes with a seal for your oil plug. So. Go ahead and open this bad boy up. So if you look at this seal, this current seal that's on this oil drain plug, you can see that it's had better days. So that's great. We're just gonna unscrew it right off there and replace it with the new one. And now we're ready to go ahead and screw this back onto the motor. So just like anything you do in life. There's a thousand different ways to do things. I always drain my oil and then replace the plug. So that way I don't end up dumping oil in and wasting it because it just comes right out the bottom. Now go ahead and give this nice tight there. Wow, that, that got tight real fast. Now we are on to changing the oil filter. So we're gonna go ahead and tilt this bad boy back down. 
Then you have to locate your oil filter, which is right there on this particular motor. Once again, something that's unique, this particular kit comes with an oil filter drip tray. You know, you could just lay rags down there or you could be super fancy with this oil drip tray and put it on there like that. Now, some people, they have a oil filter wrench, but I came from being a plumber, so you already know I use channel locks. We just want to loosen that bad boy up. So I had to move my drip tray just to loosen this up. I'm going to loosen it to about where I think they'll be. I'll be able to move it by hand or maybe without having to get such a hard grip with the channel locks and replace my fancy drip tray. Then we can go ahead and continue on screwing the oil filter. Now there's no real right or wrong way to get this thing to come off. I mean, you're not gonna reuse this oil filter, so it's toast. I've used channel locks, I've used an oil filter wrench, I've even banged a screwdriver into the side of one on a car to remove it. Whatever method you have to do, just go ahead and unscrew your oil filter, just like this. And that drip tray will actually catch any oil that you might leak out. Look how nifty that is. There's the oil filter, the old one. Here's our new oil filter. It's a Quicksilver, and we're going to take some of the new oil, make sure it's new oil, not used oil. We're gonna go ahead and open that up. And then you can see that there is an O-ring seal around this particular oil filter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and dip our finger in here, get some oil on it, and then oil up the face of this oil filter gasket. Doesn't take a ton, but you just want enough to help it make a great seal. Go ahead and remove our fancy oil filter catcher, drip pan, whatever you want to call it, and replace our oil filter. It just screws right back on. This oil filter is actually a little bit larger than the old one, which is great news. It'll be a lot easier to come off. Now, once you get in contact with the face, you can feel that. On a marine motor, it's three quarters of a turn. There's a quarter, there's a quarter, there's a quarter, to a full turn. I'm gonna go the full turn. And then that should create a complete seal. But don't worry, you already know, we're checking for leaks. The next step is to find and locate your engine oil dipstick which on this particular model is literally right next to where we are changing the oil filter. You can then go ahead and remove the dipstick and just place your funnel right into that bad boy right there. What's next? You guessed it. Now we fill it with the engine oil that comes in your oil change kit. This 60 horse is supposed to take three liters, which just so happens to be what comes in the kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dump this oil in there. And I'm gonna do this with all three bottles. Make sure not to let it overflow. It does take some time for it to drain down because this is thick stuff. Number two. Chug, 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 chug. And one for the road, cheers. Did you think I was gonna drink it? I thought about it, but I don't have any extra oil or else uh, might have taken a mouthful and spit it out for the YouTube algorithm. Which leads me to mention, while I'm pouring this in there, if you guys get value out of this video, could you hit a thumbs up for me? It helps push this video to more people that might be looking for how to change the oil in a 60 horse outboard or an outboard motor in general. And that would really help me out because I wanna spread my channel as big as I can. And if you haven't already, think about subscribing. We do all sorts of handyman content, DIY stuff, maintaining your stuff, and uh, self-reliance around here at the Handy Jeff channel. We also are working on starting a homestead. I've got some videos on hydroponic gardening and stuff. So if you have any interest in any of those things, subscribe, drop a comment down below. If there's something particular you wanna see, let me know. Give me an excuse to go buy something cool. I'll go buy it and work on it for the channel. Now let's finish this thirsty girl up.
Now that you just witnessed a fast montage of what took five minutes to pour thick oil into a motor, we're good to go. But we're not finished yet. We're gonna have to check the level. So make sure you do that. I'll show you how if you don't know how. What you are going to do is you are going to take your dipstick. You're gonna get a rag of some kind. Clean said dipstick. Make sure that all of the engine oil is out of your funnel. Then you're gonna remove the funnel. Which it looks like there's still a couple of drips in there. So I'm gonna to try to knock it to get it all out. Good enough. Now we take our dipstick, set it down in there. You will see that there are cross hatching here. It says add, which I don't know if this will focus, but it says add and then max in between the cross hatching there, in between these two pierced dots in the dipstick. Go ahead and drop your dipstick down in there. Close it on up, open it on up and pull it out. Luckily this oil is gonna be super thick, so it's going to show you where it's at which on this particular motor, it looked like we were right at the max, which is perfect. That's great news, because that's where we want it at. So with that, your oil change is complete. If you are completely satisfied with your level and you've checked it three or four times like I did, go ahead and lock that bad boy down in there. And now your oil change is complete. Go ahead and get out there, get boating, have some fun, but make sure you stay safe. And also guys, while you're here, if you need more videos on how to service your outboard motor, we're gonna be doing the lower unit oil, the fuel filter, the spark plugs, and gonna be putting a fuel tank to this because it didn't come with one. So if you have any interest in that kind of thing, check out this playlist right here. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. This has been Handy Jeff. We'll see you in another video.